Now, creating animations inside Unity can be quite messy from time to time because there's a lot of different things going on inside your animator when you have all these different states you need to swap between, you know, you need to create transitions from one to the other. And all of a sudden you have this little drawing down here at the bottom inside your animator that is just very hard to overlook and, and just make sense of. There is actually a much easier way to do animation state changes inside your game, which is using scripting. Even people who might find scripting a little bit intimidating inside Unity will most likely find this a lot easier and much more simple to, to do inside their games. So I just wanted to share what I learned about creating animation using scripting instead of doing it using the animator. So as you can see here, I do actually have a game in front of me just to demonstrate how to do this. So right now inside my game, you can see I have absolutely no transitions or anything happening inside my animator down here, but still I have animation going on inside my game. My character is jumping, he's falling, you know, he's running, he's doing all these things here that he needs to do in order to animate inside my game. So what I can do, is I can go inside my player controller and I can create a simple state machine that can actually handle the animations as he's doing various things inside the game. Now, just to show you before we get started, I just kind of want to give you an idea about how the code is going to look like because it is fairly simple to do inside your scripting. So inside my script here, I have a couple of different things. I have some fields that simply takes care of the actual animation itself. So you can see I have a animator that I grabbed off my player because I have an animator attached to my game object. I do also have a current state string that is right now just checking what the current animation state is. So I don't run the same animation constantly every single frame because if an animation is already running, for example, the running animation, then I don't want to keep reapplying the same animation over and over again because it's just hogging up resources. And then you just simply go down and create a constant field for every single animation you have. So I, for example, have a player idle, I have a player run, I have a player jump and a player fall. So I just wanted to include those in there. And anytime you create a new animation, you just create another one of these uh, constants here. Then inside my script down here, I went ahead and created two methods. I do have a method that is called change animation state, which is this one that I have right here. It's not long, as you can see, it's fairly simple. Basically, this one just goes in and changes the animation if a new animation is about to get updated. Now, I do also have another method at the bottom here, which is simply going in and actually checking if the current animation is done playing. Because in some cases, if I'm doing, for example, a jump animation, I want to finish the jump animation before I start doing a falling animation. So just to make sure my jump animation doesn't get cut off at some point before doing the falling animation, I just have this method in here that I can include inside a if statement because it's going to return a true or false based on if the jump has actually been done and is done playing. So how do we set all of this up? It's actually fairly simple because once you've set it up once, it is literally no effort to set up a new animation and actually start playing it inside your code. Uh, so what you can do is you can actually go ahead and just say, you know what, let's go ahead and create a new player character. So I'm just gonna do this from the start with you. You probably already have a sprite that you wanna use and want to animate since you are watching this video. I'm assuming you have a character already. So what you're going to do is you're gonna grab that character you're gonna go ahead and paste it inside your game. So I'm just gonna take my idle, uh, the first frame of my idle animation here. I'm just gonna go ahead and slide it over so I can actually see it. And what I want to do with this character here is I want to make sure, of course, we have an animation on this character. So right now, you know, inside the animation window, which by the way, you can find by going to window, animation, and then animation, you can just go ahead and click create. And then it's going to tell you where do you want to save this animation. I do have an animation folder inside my um, project here. So I can go inside player and then I can save this one as player underscore idle, for example. Once you have the animation down here, you can actually just go ahead and select your idle animation. By the way, you should also have this already inside your project. I'm not teaching pixel art animation in this video. I do have another video that teaches that. So if you need to have a pixel animation for your game, you can just go ahead and watch that one. I'll actually go ahead and link that in the description if you're interested. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and take my idle animation and paste it in here. So now I can see if I'm actually playing this, it is going to be playing an idle animation on my character here. So now I do actually have a player idle state inside my character here. So what I can also do is I can actually say, you know what, let's have a run animation as well. So I can actually say create new clip. And then I can go ahead and say, you know what, I'm going to create a player underscore run animation. And then I can just go ahead and say, you know what, I do also have a run animation prepared beforehand. So I can just take that. And I can just paste it in and just, you know, 
play it and see how it looks like. So now I have two different animation states that I can actually change between here. You can also see if you go inside the animator, which by the way, you can also find by going to window animation, and then the animator is right there. So if I were to actually select my new character in here, you can see that I right now have two different states that I can actually do things to inside my animator. Now do keep in mind, we're not going to be using the animator because we're going to do this the cool way, which is using scripting. So once you have this, you're actually going to go ahead and make a player controller script for your player. So typically you would go inside your assets folder, create a scripts folder, and then create a player controller script that you would then add to your character inside your scene. And that is basically just going to be the script that I have here where you just go in, you grab the rigid body component off your player because you know you need to add physics to the player so he's moving around. Uh, you're probably gonna have a update that actually checks for input. So if I currently press a certain key, then make sure to update the input key. And then inside fixed update, you may be actually adding the run to your player by adding a add force to your rigid body. So, you know, this is basic stuff. I have many tutorials showing you how to actually add movement to your player inside a 2D game, uh, but you should just be having these basic basic movement for your, for your player. Once you have that, you're gonna go ahead and go to the top here. And like I said, we're going to create a small comment just so you know exactly what this code does. And you're just gonna go ahead and create a field for the animator a string for the current state. You're gonna create a constant and you're gonna go ahead and call it with capitalized letters because this is a constant. So that is the habit of doing that when it comes to constants. So call it something like player underscore idle with capitalized letters and then set it equal. And this is very important. Set this equal to the exact same name as you gave the animation state inside Unity. So if we were to go back inside Unity and go into my animation. You can see that I have one called player underscore run. I did capitalize the P, I capitalized the R. If I go into player idle, you can see I have the same thing, player underscore idle with capitalized letters. It's very important that you capitalize and call it the exact same thing as these names inside your state machine here. So doing that, let's go ahead and go back inside our scripts and simply adding in the animations that we have so far. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the bottom and I'm going to create this animation change state method that is simply going to go in and actually check if a certain animation is already playing. If it's not playing, then play the new animation. So I went and created a private void change animation state method. I did also include a string inside the parameter because we need to pass in the new animation we want to play. So in this case, it's going to be a string called new state. And I just simply went in here and created a if statement that says if the new state that we're passing in, meaning the new animation we want to play is equal to the current animation that is playing, then just return this method without doing anything. And again, this is to prevent animations from being played again and again and again, every single frame, uh, which is just going to hog up a lot of resources inside your game. So if it's already playing the animation we want it to be playing, then we don't want it to be playing the same animation again, the next frame. So after doing this small check here, just to see if we should not do anything, we're gonna go ahead and just apply the new animation to the current animation. So we're going to grab the animator field and say we want to do dot play, and then the new state that we're passing into this method here, which is going to be the name of the new animation we want to play. And then I want to update the current state field that we added inside our fields up there to be equal to the new state that we're playing inside our game. So with this, we now just simply update the current animation and don't do anything if we already have the same animation playing. It is also important to note here that the animator should also be grabbed inside your start method. So going up to the top here, when we create the animator field, you do need to go down inside your start method and say you want to set the animator equal to the current game object dot get components and then grab the animator component because you're not grabbing the animator component just simply by creating the field. It's right now empty, like there's nothing in it. So you need to actually grab the animator by going inside your start method and then adding this line of code here. With that said, we do also have another method. Now this one is going to be checking if the current animation that is playing has finished playing. And this is just a very useful method to have inside your game. In some cases, if you want an animation to finish playing before it starts updating the next animation. For example, like I said, if I'm jumping, then I don't want to cut off the jump and start the fall animation immediately after the first frame of jumping. I want to finish the jumping animation and then play the falling animation. So what I can do here is I can create a, not a void type method, but a Boolean type method, which means that we're going to be returning a true or false statement. And I'm just going to call this one is animation playing. Now I should actually be capitalizing this 
then it's actually a mistake on my end if you want to do things correctly. And then inside the parameters here, I want to include my animator, which is going to be the animator that we actually uh, grabbed inside our fields up here inside the start method. And I want to include the animation state that I want to check for if it's already done playing. Inside the method, I went ahead and created a if statement. And inside the if statement, we're just simply checking that the animator that we have grabbed inside our player what the current info is of that animation that is playing currently and if the name of that animation is equal to a certain name so in this case here the name that we passed in using the parameter up here after doing this i also wanted to check for a second thing inside this condition so i added the two ampersand symbols here and then i said the same thing i want to grab the animator i want to get the information of the current animation that is running and then i want to check how far along the actual animation is by simply checking if the time of the animation is currently less than one which means that it's not done playing yet. So zero is going to be the beginning of the animation and then one is going to be the end of the animation. Then anything in between is going to be how far along the animation you actually currently are. So just to do a quick recap here, we're basically just checking if the current animation name is equal to the name that we're passing in and if it's still playing. That's basically just what we're doing here and then we're turning it as true if it's still playing and then false if it's not still playing. So doing this with these two methods here, I now went up inside my script. And again, just to show the same thing, we do actually need to update this because I did actually change my capitalization. So going inside my fixed update here, you can actually see that if I scroll down a little bit, you can see that I currently have my running happening right here inside this line of code. What you should be doing is simply going down below adding in the method that we created at the bottom there and just simply paste in what animation you want to be running. So in this case, you have play underscore run because my play is running currently. Now, if you want to check for a certain thing, like I said, if for example, I'm currently jumping and I don't want to be running or doing the fall animation yet, then you can add in a if statement where you just simply check the second method that I created is animation playing and then I simply paste in the animator that I grabbed inside my fields and what animation I'm checking for. So in this case, it is going to be the player jump. So if I'm currently not jumping inside my game, then I'm simply running a if statement that checks if I'm grounded to the ground currently, because if I'm grounded, then I want to do the run animation. And if I'm currently not grounded, which means that I'm floating somewhere inside the air because I just jumped, then I want to do the player fall animation. Of course, after our jump animation is done playing. So doing it this way, you can actually add the different animations inside your code, which also makes it a little bit more controllable because either way, if you're using the animator, you still need to add some code inside your player controller script to actually change the animation state using the transitions inside your, inside your animator. So why not just do everything using a script? Why not just create this animation state machine that is really easy and quick to set up. And now all you need to do is just add this line of code wherever you want certain animations to happen. So with that said, after learning how to do it this way, I just started doing it this way every single time. And I hope it makes it a lot easier for you too, because I personally think this is a lot simpler than, than using the animator inside Unity. I think the animator is more of a, a tool that new users of Unity, they, they start using just to get the hang of things. And then once they get a little bit more into scripting, then probably you want to do it this way instead. That's my opinion, at least. You're welcome to have a different opinion. I just think this is a lot easier. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.